In 2011, Reverend Dr. Haynes had the prestigious honor of being the featured speaker at the Congressional Black Caucus annual prayer breakfast. In 2012, Ebony Magazine named him as the Power 100, on the Power 100 list for the most influential individuals in the African American community. Additionally, for the past 10 years, Reverend Dr. Haynes has given the message during the praise break of the nationally recognized Ricky Smiley Morning Show. A true leader, visionary, and innovator, and community activist, today, the 100 Black Men of America welcomes Dr. Reverend Frederick Douglass III. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me express my appreciation, uh, first of all, to our outstanding leader, uh, the legendary Thomas Deutsch, for being who he is and for all that he continues to do, not only as the drum major for this movement, uh, but also for what he does across the length and breadth of this nation, yes, even the world. Our world is a better place because of the legendary Thomas Deutsch, and I think we need to appreciatively acknowledge the legend uh, who is in our, in our midst. I also want to thank uh, Timothy Hill for his kind and gracious words of uh, presentation. Uh, I will ask that you would join me uh, because as he was introducing me, I was asking God to forgive him for being so extravagant uh, and hyperbolic uh, in his usage of language and then that God would forgive me because I like the way he lied about me. So uh, I appreciate uh, him. I appreciate uh, again this high honor, especially as we salute our young people today uh, in these few moments I want to talk about the champ is here the champ is here this ain't entertainment this is for my people on the slave ship these songs are just the spirituals I swam against the waves with and made it to shore much to their amazement those are the words of Nipsey Hussle. It's Nipsey reminds all of us of our heritage in this country of swimming against the waves. We've always known what it meant to swim upstream, but not just upstream, but to swim against the waves. Well, you didn't get Nipsey. Let me see if Langston Hughes can grab you because with ungrammatical profundity, he embodies the wisdom of a black mother whose son is evidently towed up from the flow up and ready to give up and listen to what this mother says again her language is not right but her theme and her brilliance is tight as she says well son I tell you life for me ain't been no crystal stair it's had tacks in it splinters boards torn up places with no carpet on the floor bare but all the while I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light so boy don't you quit now don't you sit down on these steps because you find it's kind of hard I still climbing I still going and life for me ain't been no crystal stair well you have yet to get it but the thematic thread that is woven through the fabric of both Nipsey and Langston speaking mother to son is the fact that life is filled with overwhelming obstacles not just obstacles but structures and systems that are diabolically designed to preclude our fulfilling our possibilities look again at the staircase it ain't no crystal stair it has tacks in it splinters and boards torn up poetically and metaphorically Langston is speaking don't miss this of the structure that is is diabolically designed to preclude the upward mobility of my young brother who was trying to reach the top. There are structures even today in these disunited states of America that are diabolically designed to preclude the possibilities of our young people, especially our young African American males. Paul Butler talks about it in his brilliant book, Chokehold, but not only Chokehold 
quote, there's Dr. David Williams of Harvard University. He talks about the structure of residential segregation. If you read the book, The Color of Law, it explains the fact that none of us live where we live simply because of choices and cash, but oftentimes it's because of a system of residential segregation that was woven into the structure of this nation and that structure don't miss this recognize if I live in certain communities here it is in a real sense my life expectancy is not determined by my genetic code but by my zip code why because in certain zip codes there is an absence of what healthy food as a consequence you call them food deserts job deserts opportunity deserts educational deserts those are the structures here it is the waves that we are challenged to swim against that is the staircase that has tax in it splinters and boards torn up but we are here today in Hollywood Florida to celebrate and salute young people who have the hustle of Nipsey hustle and recognize that sometimes you've got to swim against the waves and recognize the wisdom of that mother in mother to son that you got to keep on climbing you got to keep on going even when life for you ain't no crystal stair y'all not feeling me let me see if I can make this plain because I hope you recognize that my subject does not originate with me my subject comes from the greatest boxing champion of all time I'm talking about Muhammad Ali Ali was cold he would float like a butterfly sting like a bee y'all don't know nothing about Muhammad Ali Ali was cold because Ali my sisters and brothers was not just a champion in the ring he was a champion outside of the ring does it not blow your mind the same people that celebrate and commemorate Ali can't stand Colin Kaepernick but that's a hypocrisy I'll deal with at another time but understand my sisters and brothers that Ali recognized whenever you've been gifted with a voice and a platform it's not simply for your own self aggrandizement but that platform is to be used by you to give a voice to those who have no voice that's why I've got to give a standing ovation a shout out to the hundred black men because the hundred black men recognize when you've been gifted by the Almighty with gifts and with platforms and voices it ain't about you it's about what God does through you to touch people who may never ever pay you back I'm gonna do that one more time the real test of your faith if you have any is what you do for people who may never be able to do anything for you I like that because it simply says that all of us are here because somebody before us had the wisdom and the strength to pay it forward you can't pay them back but you can pay it forward I guess I didn't come through I'll give it to you like this I was on the plane all night long trying to get here from San Francisco and here's what happened just before the flight landed in Fort Lauderdale I went to the restroom and after I handled my business I then washed my hands because that's what we do we wash our hands so I washed my my hands but there was a sign don't miss this at the bottom of the mirror it made me shout and think about the hundred black men because the sign at the bottom of the mirror in the bathroom where I'm washing my hands said as a courtesy to the person who is coming next please use your towel to wipe the basin y'all didn't get it I'll come back and get you one more time in a real sense the sign said somebody is coming after you and no matter how you feel found this restroom you have a responsibility to leave it better than you found it and that's what the hundred black men are called to do we are called to wipe this basin of racism and sexism and all of these isms that need to become wasms and when we do that we will make it better for the next generation I'm still not coming through well let me get back to my man Ali because Ali was was cold in the ring and outside of the ring outside of 
the ring. He used his voice to inject Afro esteem into black people who were always told they were less than and not equal to. And then he took a stand against the unjust war in Vietnam and said, the Viet Cong ain't never called me the N-word. I ain't got no quarrel with them Viet Cong. But then you know what happened. Ali gets back in the ring after being out for three and a half years. He comes back. He fights Joe Frazier in the the fight of the century loses that fight but that's not the end of his comeback because we all know that George Foreman became the heavyweight champion of the world big George Foreman Foreman my sisters and brothers six feet four over 220 pounds and he is the champion he had annihilated Joe Frazier he had wiped out Ken Norton both of whom had defeated Muhammad Ali Lee. And so in 1974, there's the rumble in the jungle. And you know what happened? Ali is getting ready for the fight. But look what Ali did. If you get a chance, check out, if you please, the wonderful documentary, When We Were Kings, because Ali, every single day, would announce his arrival in training camp. Guess how he would do it? Here comes your shout. Ali would come into training camp in a dazzle robe he would get to an African drum and then he would beat the drum to a rhythm and it simply announced the champ is here the champ is here y'all miss your shout let me do it one more time Ali is fighting for the heavyweight title Big George has the title but Ali would come into camp and announce his own arrival and say the champ is here I'm gonna do it one more time Muhammad Ali did not have have the title he was fighting for the title George Foreman had wiped out Frazier had annihilated Ken Norton and even the people in Ali's camp didn't think he could win the fight but Ali wasn't tripping on what they thought I think I'll stop right there and simply say to our young people we celebrate you today because you have the sense to cancel your subscription to what other people say about you because in this life it ain't about what other folks say about you it's what you say about you and what you say about you ought to be rooted in what God says about you no wonder the poet said if you think you're beaten you are if you think you dare not you don't if you like to win but think you can't it's almost a sense you won't if you think you're outclassed you are you've got to think high to rise you've got to be sure of yourself if you're going to win a prize life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man but sooner or later the man who wins is the man who thinks he can I just said something right there in this life it ain't about what other people say about you it's about what you say about you and what you say about you ought to be rooted in what God says about you I'll tell you what God says about you you're a child of the king that makes you a prince I'll tell you what God says is about you. You're a special treasure, a royal priesthood. You're the head, not the tail, on top and not the bottom. I think I'm in church. I better bring this thing down because I'm simply saying to all of our young people up in this house, if you're going to swim against the waves, if you're going to rise to the top in spite of life not being a crystal stair, you better learn how to speak words of encouragement to yourself even when other other people don't believe in you make sure you believe in you I guess I didn't come through clear I'll give it to you like this I give it to you like this Ali watch this would announce his arrival may I do it one more time the champ is here the champ is here and finally the hate field reporters went up to Ali and said Mr. Ali why are you announcing your arrival saying the champ is here when you are not the champ you don't have the title and Ali clapped right back and said I did not say the title holder is here I said the champ is here you see the title is what George has but champ is who I am in a real sense I'm suggesting to every 
every brother in this house in this life you don't discover who you are you decide who you are and once you decide who you are then you define who you are and when you define who you are no one can confine who you are why because you've canceled your subscription to what other people have to say about you but that's not all I want to say when I say the champ is here that announcement recognizes that real champions recognize that their life is not simply about themselves in a real sense you are to be not just a person who is secure in your identity but you must recognize you must have the sense to be God's instrument I like that right there and that is an instrument is only as good as the hands who are playing it I'm not coming through I make it real plain a few years ago I went to the funeral of Johnny Cochran y'all may not know Johnny Cochran Johnny Cochran of course got his fame defending OJ Simpson but many of us don't remember that Johnny was advocating for justice fighting against police brutality as a matter of fact he was the lead attorney or the defending attorney for Geronimo Pratt and so Johnny had it like that so when Johnny passed I happened to be in LA check out what happened I go to the funeral and the funeral is wearing me out because of the wonderful testimonies of tribute to the silver tongued orator and advocate Johnny Cochran but then y'all this is what wiped me out Stevie Wonder the eighth wonder of the world I know y'all trying to act like y'all don't know Stevie but Stevie Wonder the eighth wonder of the world was called on to play and sing and guess what he did he sat down at the at the grand piano there in the church there in LA West Angeles Church of God in Christ Bishop Charles Blake and Stevie sat down and he played watch this amazing grace I won't forget this as long as I stay black because Stevie is playing amazing grace and the piano is now singing amazing grace because Stevie has got it like that the piano is getting down the piano is doing the doggone thing and when he got done there wasn't a dry eye in the place I had to get up and go to the restroom take me a bathroom break and while I'm in the hallway guess what happened I ran into Bishop Charles Blake who was escorting Stevie Wonder to his office because he was going to take a bathroom break that was really cool I had never met Stevie Bishop Blake said Freddie I didn't know you were here I want to introduce you to Stevie Wonder I said cool in the gang and y'all I met Stevie Wonder check out what happened Charles Blake Bishop Blake said some nice things about me in introducing me to Stevie Wonder Stevie responded it's good to see you now what do you say when Stevie Wonder says it's good to see you and so I said yes sir it's good to see you and thank you amazing grace was phenomenal I've never heard it played with such power it blessed me and Stevie then said thank you that reminds me Bishop you need to fix these keys on the piano and called out the keys that were broken on the piano I said hold on man you mean to tell me that you just got through wiping us out with the piano that has broken keys and Stevie said you hear pretty good don't you I had keys on the piano that were broken I said well how did you wipe us out like that he said because I knew how to transpose the song and I played around the brokenness come here it's time to shout because all of us have some brokenness all of us have something wrong with us but don't you let what's wrong with you blind you to what God can do for you because when you're in the hands of Almighty God God can play around the brokenness and when God plays around the brokenness God will make music out of what you have left over I got one thing to say to all of y'all the champ is here the champ is here 
the champ is here and in light of the champ being here I finally say to all of you my wonderful youth who we are saluting this day yes you are champion so live like a champion study like a champion walk like a champion talk like a champion you are a champion I don't care what the world says about you the champ is here when you walked off into this auditorium you should have walked in here with your head held high and saying the champ is here because when you know that you are a champion even the devil in hell can't stop you from what God is up to in your life and so here it is my brothers the champ is here the champ is here I didn't come through I'll wrap it up like this since y'all not feeling me yet I'm simply trying to say the champ is here you've got to have a sense of your own identity you've got to have the sense right now of understanding you're an instrument in the hand of Almighty God but then you've got to have finally your source of inspiration your source of inspiration lets you know there's got to be a higher power in your life you ain't going to make it in this life by yourself. You're going to need somebody bigger than you and I to give you the strength to keep on, keep it on. When you feel like you can't go on, I'm not coming through. I'll wrap it with this. I promise you the champ is here. A few years ago, I had, I went to Hampton, uh, Hampton uh, Virginia for the minister's conference at Hampton University. And check out what happened. I, I like staying on Virginia Beach. I got a hotel there on the beach I like to stay at because I always get this hot view of the beach. I get to dig the scene with my preacher lean. Woo woo. And so as a consequence I land in Norfolk. I always rent me a drop top. Got to drop that top. That's how you dig the scene with your preacher lean. And so I rented my drop top but my flight was late. Here's what happened. It was really jacked up. My flight is late and so I drove to the hotel. I arrived arrive at the hotel and this is what happened. I'm standing in line. The person in front of me is told by the person at the desk, I'm sorry, but we are oversold for tonight. As a consequence, we don't have any room here in the hotel. And so if you don't mind, we've taken the liberty to get you a room at a hotel down the street, still on the beach. Well, that was for him, not for me. And so as a consequence, when he moved on about his business, I walked on up there like I knew they had a room for me lesson right there and that is always act like you belong even if you're not sure you do I acted like I had a room there in spite of the bad news I had heard here's what happened and y'all it got me shouting and that is I get up there I say reservation for Haynes and she says sir I don't know if you heard the person in front of you but we don't have any rooms I said ma'am let me then use my black card. I said reservation for Frederick Douglas Haynes. That's my whole name, Frederick Douglas Haynes. I dare you now to come against that name. I'm dropping the black card. She said, I'm sorry, Frederick Douglas Haynes, but we don't have any more rooms. And so we've taken the liberty of getting you a room. Well, I'm not stopping there. I'm not going to let what you've done block me from what I've been looking forward to. I need you to go get someone in charge. And so that's what she did because I was not going to give up on what I felt I had coming to me in spite of how jacked up things were. I think I'll stop right there because we live in a crazy time. Cornell West puts it like this. We are witnessing the eclipse of decency, honesty, and integrity. It's left us in the chaotic shadows of emboldened racism, unvarnished greed, military madness, not to mention predatory patriarchy. It's a hell of a world we live in. We've heard of PTSD. That's post-traumatic stress disorder. But we're living in every day. We're living in ETSD. That's everyday traumatic stress disorder. And because of that, we find ourselves up against it, catching hell on top of hell. Young brothers, watch it. You can be at, you can be in Starbucks and all of a sudden get arrested for sin 
simply being black in Starbucks. Y'all didn't get that. Sorority sisters will tell you, you can, be, you can be engaged in a community service project on a road in Pennsylvania and get harassed by the police for doing community service. It's a crazy time that we live in. But in spite of that, you've got to press on anyhow, knowing the champ is here. And that's why she went and got the person in charge. And here's what happened. This happened. It still blows my mind. The manager came out and the managers looked at me and the manager said, Haynes? Pastor Freddie Haynes? And so I said, if you got a room, I'm Pastor Freddie Haynes. And so he said, no, 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 I'm being serious. Are you Pastor Freddie Haynes, Dallas, Texas? I said, if you have a room, I'm Pastor Freddie Haynes, Dallas, Texas. He said, no, I'm being very serious right now because you have no idea if you're Pastor Freddie Haynes, what you've done for my family. Hold on one second. And y'all, he took out his cell phone and called someone. I'm not knowing what's going on. I ain't feeling it because I have a, I'm trying to get in my room and I'm very tired and I don't care who he's calling. And so he said, Pastor Haynes, this is my son. You have no idea what you've done for my son. My son was hooked on heroin and my son had hit rock bottom. And when he hit rock bottom, some friends did an intervention. And when they did the intervention, they made him watch a YouTube video of yours where you are preaching about addiction and deliverance from addiction and dealing with the pain that causes people to anesthetize themselves. And when you did that, they made him watch and tears came down his eyes as, he, as you talked about the pain and the hope of deliverance. And from that moment on, Pastor Haynes, for now 483 days, my son has been heroin free for 483 days, Pastor Haynes, because he heard your word. He heard your message. I got to thank you. And then he said, now here, this is my son right here. Son, you won't believe who I'm talking to. And the son said, don't tell me it's Pastor Freddie Haynes. He said, here. And y'all, I'm not, I'm happy for his son, but I need to get in my room. I'm really nice and compassionate, but this ain't the time. And so when he did that, I got on the phone obligated to. I said, hello. He said, oh my God, you're my hero. I thank God for you. God used you to set me free. And y'all, while he was talking, his father then said, here's what I'm going to do. We are out of rooms here, but guess what? We always have a, a couple of rooms that we save. And the room we save tonight is the presidential suite. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook you up with the presidential suite for your whole stay and the room is on me you ain't got to pay for it I'm gonna handle it myself and y'all you know why it happened don't you it happened because he said because of what you've done for my son I'm going to open up a door for you that you wouldn't have had had you not had this relationship with my son I didn't come through in a real sense what was closed to everyone else opened up for me because the father appreciated what I did for the son and because of what I did for the son the father opened up a door for me well I'm on my way to my seat but I'm simply trying to say if y'all know the son I promise you the son will connect you with the father and the father will make a way out of no way the father will help you accomplish every goal you want to have in this life the father is able to do it and when the father does it no matter where you go and what you are up against you can say with Muhammad Ali the champ is here